when, when I think of the word virtual, and I'm just speaking for myself, I don't know how you feel about this, but I think that the first thing we have to do is acknowledge that there's an intimidation factor in the word virtual. And for a lot of us, myself included, I, I hear the word virtual and I automatically go to the farthest reaches of technology where AI has dominated and the IoT is what we're swimming in. Um, when in fact, I think that the best way to approach this entire topic is to understand that most of us listening have been participating in a virtual world for most of our lives in one form or another. And I'm referring specifically what came to mind was the very first time my dad unpacked an Atari for my brother and I, and we played Space Invaders, and we were immersed in a world that was, in fact, a virtual world. We were in a virtual world and have been in lots of ways for most of our lives. So let's, let's dial the volume down a little bit on the mystery and recognize that all virtual really means for us as contractors and coaches is that the medium for expression is outside of the individual. The medium for communication, the medium for having an experience does not solely belong to one person. And that's a huge advantage because it opens up a massive opportunity for scaling. That said, it's not probably time to ditch the in-home sales model just yet. I had a mind-blowing conversation with Jennifer yesterday that I'm still reeling from, and the impact of the internet is undeniable. Yet some of the data suggests that person-to-person -person contact is still a preferred method among many people. The question is how will we use technologies like Tom's or perhaps David's to augment it? And so I'm sharing this with you because you can see a little bit um, that there are still purchase groups that really do prefer the face-to-face -face sales model of uh, the 65 plus, even though they're very, 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 very active online, uh, speaking for my own mother and father in their 70s, they live online. But that is a group of people that still might prefer to work directly with an individual from a, a, from a trust standpoint. And clearly the role that referrals play, peer-to-peer -peer referrals, friends and neighbors and coworkers, that's always going to have uh, probably an, an incredibly persuasive role in making buying decisions. So we're probably in the middle of a transition in one form or another, but there are still people that do prefer to have direct contact with an individual. We just simply need to get used to the idea that how that individual transfers his or her information may not be the same in the future. And furthermore, the contractor recommendation will always be a part of the purchase process as well. Surveyed homeowners, 45% of them bought a system because they talked to Matt's Heating and said, what do you think I should do? So they want to have that connection. They want to have that trust factor. It just may not necessarily be, you know, eyeball to eyeball. Notably, by the way, only 11% of surveyed homeowners made a buying decision on price. So the role that technology plays in terms of helping us scale is really twofold. One, we have to come to terms with the fact that people still value the face-to-face -face experience. That's terrific. It's probably never going to go away. And at the same time, we also have to accept that the medium is the message. But on Monday, I did a podcast with a fella who provided some fantastic data regarding the benefits of virtual selling and the things that he shared with me that we can all appreciate and probably the reasons to get behind this from a selling standpoint. Number one, he watched his upsell accessory and cross selling opportunities improve because he had a platform that was very consistent and it also allowed the homeowner to do a lot of the self selection for themselves. So, for example, in my house, we have a 19-year-old furnace and we have a 15-year-old water heater. If given a virtual platform that's very consistent, right, that really kind of downplays the salesperson's role and having to remember all the things to talk about, we will most likely sell ourselves up if given the option to do it on our own. Second, he uh, shared with me some of the numbers that his ticket price 
prices had gone up tremendously. In fact, he shared just last night uh, some of the data. His ticket price had gone from the mid sevens to closer to the tens. So he attributed that to once again, when we buy online, we tend to sell ourselves up if given three or four choices and not the pressure of a salesperson with us or um, any of the scarcity associated with that. He watched his ticket price increase. And then, you know, finally, there is a trust factor. And I think this is something that you may have a different opinion about than I do. But when I purchase something online, I just bought a book from Amazon, Digital Minimalism. I just bought a book. Do I trust that that is a, 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 a proven method of communication? Do I rely on it? Uh, and the answer is for me, absolutely. And so I think we're also at this point as organizations where we have to recognize that people do trust the relationship that they have with lots of other virtual e-commerce platforms, be it Costco or Amazon. The podcast is up. I'd invite you to listen to it. But when I asked him, why should people do this? Why should people begin to start to, 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 to sell products online or why should they use virtual platforms? He said, these are the three reasons. Cross-sell and upsell went up, ticket price went up, and people trust it. I also asked him, is it hard to get started? As Jennifer can attest, I am a neophyte. I'm not a technologically sophisticated person. But the answer is no, it's incredibly easy to get started. Um, there are existing bolt-on products right now that if you've got a functional website, you can add these bolt-ons and turn your website into an e-commerce platform. And as Tom will share, he's got fantastic technology as well. So this is not some massive digital divide. There are existing products out there that are working and don't take a huge investment or a huge amount of time. So if you want to listen to this particular podcast, um, I would encourage you to go back. It's on Monday of uh, this week, uh, and I'll share the information with you there. But to me, this week is, 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 is kind of a benchmark. How we buy is never going to be the same. And, and I honestly believe that we're going to get through this as an industry, but it will reshape the DNA of how we serve customers, how we sell to customers. I referenced this article on LinkedIn this week. Small businesses, this guy, Robert Wolcott, forecasts maybe have five years and probably less to really get serious and fluent about their digital strategy. So I look at this particular topic and say, we still have to train, we still have to sell, it's gonna be different. And as you may know, um, I'm offering online coaching at the sales lab. You can use your accrual funds. And I put up some statistics this week on my website. You know, I, liked, I like the industry data I'm getting right now. And um, as a way to say thanks, right, if you go to aaronfletching.com to the sales lab, tab, there is a white paper, how and why people buy HVAC systems. It's got the best data that I have been able to find. It should help you really think differently about where you see your sales model going. And if you have any questions about the sales lab, please give me a ring. Uh, you can use your accrual funds. Here's all my contact information. Um, I would encourage you to listen to the pods that were posted this week. They really will change perspective. So thank you guys. Happy selling. Stay safe. And uh, let's go into the digital frontier together.